Welcome to the Get Off Our Lawn Show. My name is Dave Jackson. I'm coming to you from not my man cave, but down here in the dining room of Dave and Pamela Seymour's house down here in the great state of North Carolina. And my cohort upstairs in his office, Mr. Dave Seymour, also the man who invented the double stuffed Oreo, is upstairs <laughs> right now doing this, doing <laughs> being the co-host of this whole thing. And with us, Folks, you're not seeing you're not seeing triplicate here. We got three D's today. All everybody's All named Dave today. Dave. We have three days. We have with us class of eighty, Dryden High School, Mr. David Stoner Bell with us today. Very nice doing, to be friend? here, guys. Thank you for having me. No, it's the least we can do. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, we've tried this a couple times. Yeah, and a uh, little eye surgery issue, but. Uh, I'm glad we're, we're working it out today. All right. And how are you feeling? Uh, I actually just went last Friday, and I didn't know that I had three sets of stitches, uh, uh, four external, which were around the pupil of my eye, and then I have three or two recessed in my eye that are currently supposed to go away on their own. Um, and. Uh, but he took out three or four of the external stitches. So that's why there may be like a little swelling, but what the fuck? Nobody cares <laughs> except me. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're totally fine. So it's all good. So yeah. the, the typical way our ongoing theme is we've been talking to folks we graduated with. Mm -hmm. So the other folks we graduated with can find out what's happened to them since we graduated. So we're okay. doing hey. So we're just doing the whole, every, the day we walked off the field when we graduated, what's happened to Dave Stoner, Bell, ever since we left school up to now, and just, just get us caught up through, uh, through all that last 40 yeah. plus years? I barely re remember graduation. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, I remember getting uh, the R Award, uh, which surprised me. Um, which really? Me, yeah. yeah. Wow, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Oh, well, there was there were others equally as deserving, but um, which kind of brings me very quickly to the favorite teacher question. Um, obviously, Ms. Vorce was my penultimate favorite. Um, and then was it was it Mrs. Broadwell? Was she the English teacher? She was the English right. teacher, 12th grade English. Yep. Yes. Adored her. I Lang for make us making us memorize all that. Um, all those speeches. You and me too, brother. You and me right? too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? When, when am I ever, ever going to use this? But anyway, I was glad. Uh, he, he was a very good teacher. But what I remember the most from uh, his class is Phil Bakke and I, and I think there were maybe two other people. We were supposed to do something on, on uh, a foreign culture uh -huh. uh, or an alien culture. Uh, and uh, we chose like Native American segment another, and we were, you were supposed to present like either a food, some kind of food item or something like that. Anyway, we like totally uh, screwed this up. This is a Buddy Lang's class. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah. And we had to, uh, we ended up presenting as something that we ourselves made, uh, 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 Lipton, uh, professional or you know canned soup and tried to pass it off as our own that we had done in the home <laughs> room and uh, and I remember we had to give everyone a taste of it and uh, his comment was that one of us ought to become a chef <laughs> no way now what yeah. country, what country were you representing 
Well, it was Native Americans, I believe, was is is what we were what the subject was, um, uh, for our particular presentation, and um, yeah, I I remember him looking at us like with an evil eye, going, "I'm not buying this for a minute," <laughs> but he never said anything really out loud. It was just that look he had. Um, so um, that was that. Um, yeah, but Vorce I liked because uh, nobody else is going to know this, but in 1958, Rosalind Russell did a film called Auntie Mame. And Vorce mimicked her hairstyles all year long. So, like, there was, like, four or five hairstyles that Rosalind Russell wore, like, in varying colors. No way. Yeah. And we bonded over that fact that I noticed that that's what she was doing. Is this, wow. this braid across the top, and then she would go. She would go black and white. She would go red. She would go, you know, just all these colors that that were in the film. Yeah, and she liked the idea that I noticed that. Well, that's you awesome. know, I spent I spent two classes with Miss Morse. Yes, I took, I took a ceramics class. Uh huh. Making pots and uh, pinch pots and different things like that, and then another one was like a uh, a form class. Where we had to make like sculptures and things okay. that you know it was like Fig figure drawing it was different mediums and so it was okay. like a yeah. poster like an advertisement and okay. then like a, a three-dimensional kind of thing and stuff like that uh -huh. so uh -huh. I, I enjoyed her she she enjoyed my art right okay and yeah if, if you can call it that at that point yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> no i yeah I, I really admired the woman she she was like the yeah. one stabilizing factor and and in an unsure life at that point. Yeah. Uh, well, she had sort of this daunting personality too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. know, if you didn't know her, yeah, you were like, I, uh, you know, she yeah. was like, you're not sure if you wanted to talk right to her right away. Exactly. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. No, I, I absolutely adored the adored the woman, and there was a Miss Birnbaum, like an eighth grade who yep. taught math. Do you remember her? Yes, I do. A little. Little skinny lady, I think it was. Yes, uh, frizzy, wild hair. Yeah, yeah. Dressed kind of very seventies. Yeah, <laughs> adored <laughs> her because I sucked at math. Okay, and she was extremely patient with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, you know, we we did some stuff after school to try to get me, to, uh, you know, up to speed. Up to stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Okay, so what was the original question? Oh, what okay. what happened after graduation? So, right. so we were walking out the field. We graduated. It was a beautiful sunny mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. on the on the football field outside. Mm -hmm. And we were outside. We, pardon? We were outside. We were outside on the football oh. field. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take your word for that. All right. <laughs> you can take both our words for that. You can take both okay. our words for that. All right. Walked across the the platform. You know, Stefano yes. said. I'm so okay. glad you made it, you know? Yeah, right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you took off. I did take off. I took off uh, for uh, Miami. Miami? Which was, mm -hmm, All right. One, one of 60,000 mistakes I've made in my life. Um, <laughs> hated it. Uh, worst city in the world to live in. It's, it's the dirtiest city I've ever been in. Like and right I, off the Right off the bat, you went down there, Dave. Like right after we graduated. Like well, no, it, there was probably a couple months. Okay. Um, uh, I had gone down to see my grandparents and was introduced to this gentleman um, through uh, mutual friends. Yeah. And uh, then relocated to uh, Miami for just a little over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, Never really knew what this guy did. I'm sure it was nothing legal. Um, and uh, um, found myself in a, in a domestic situation that where this 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 guy was very controlling. I see. Um, and um, were you going down? I believe that there. What was the goal of going to Florida? Were you trying to do your art? Well, I was no no. I was I was just going down to visit my grandparents. Oh, okay, all right. And, and they, stood, before and I. Stayed. Yeah, because I was accepted to FIT okay. in New York Fashion Institute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And, and so I was going down to spend some time 
with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I met this character. Gotcha. gotcha. And and uh, postponed yeah, yeah. my enrollment. Yeah. All right. So, so you're off Miami. You're out of Miami now. Out of Miami. Yeah. Went to New York. Okay. Uh, did a semester and a half uh, at FIT. New uh, York City? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fashion Institute. Yeah. Okay. On 27th and 7th. Um, got a job uh, in school working at, um, how do I say this? Um, a bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is before before they they uh closed them which was about a year later all right um and then uh got a job at the limelight in new york which i don't know if people know what remember what yeah. limelight tell me, was tell me what limelight is yeah, club, right? limelight were uh discos much like studio 54 oh, okay. all right yeah and and uh um the the guy would usually take uh, churches and convert them into discos. All right. And so now that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And this and is mid to late 80s then. Or this is correct. This is mid mid 80s, correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. And and uh um I don't know if I I'm gonna tell this story just because I think it's hilarious. Um it was a board night at the limelight, the bridge and tunnel people were in and um, it was rather slow. And so uh, we decided to do mushrooms that night. <laughs> and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, one, it started raining, and two, uh, it got really busy. And we were all in a state of mind that was not conducive to work. Actually, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, so the coat check, uh, and that night there were, you know, galoshes, there were umbrellas, there was hats, trench coats, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Everything got thrown down the hole to the basement where people would uh, exit at the end of the evening with no tickets, nothing to, you know, for us, to, for, any, for anybody. To hand out, to, right? Hand out. Yeah, yeah. To return. And I was so paranoid. Uh, I had uh, met uh, Montgomery Cliff's uh, nephew, uh, oh, Casey, wow. and um, and he was kind of my savior that night because they had the rotating like laundry laundry type bar right. that rotates that you would Coat normally hang right coat on coat right yeah, and I was so panicked to confront anybody because I knew it was going to be a shit show trying to find their belongings. I thought I was properly hidden in between the coats, just going around. You were riding the coat rack. Riding the coat rack, yes. Riding, <laughs> so I was rescued. <laughs> I was rescued by, and I thought I was completely, you know, hidden. Like nobody knew it was me going through right, there. Right. Yep. And was rescued by Casey and um, promptly put into a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to be helping anybody, much less myself. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. The limelight. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, yeah. you had, you were always sort of into fashion design, correct? Correct. Okay. Well, I mean, not always. It, I mean. Uh, let me rephrase uh, that. Yeah. When you were in high school, you had a fashion design portfolio. Did you know Correct. That? Okay. I did. Yes. I just wanted to verify. How do you know that? We we remember these things, man. I have another story for you later. Yeah, as okay. do I. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So I went to the Fashion Institute uh, right. for yep. fashion illustration, Got and yep. did a semester and a half. Um, and there were uh, three of us that became very close. Um, and one was this stunning, stunning six foot, auburn haired. Um, girl from Arkansas. Uh, I mean, you talk about people walking into a room and everyone turning. Mm -hmm. Marta, Marta could do that. The other guy was, um, we were in a class together. And, and ironically, the three of us 
were in the remedial math class because we sucked at it. And, we, and they, they made us take this math class over again. Anyway, um, uh, Ken Miller was, was, was the other guy's name and his boyfriend was, became my agent. And I thought in a semester and a half, shoot, I got an agent already. That's right. I don't need to finish school. Right. You know, it's the second biggest mistake of my life. And um, promptly, uh, you know, I, I did some commission portrait work and uh, did uh, three portraits, eight foot portraits for this store in Soho uh, who that only sold red, black and white clothing. So my illustrations uh, or paintings were to be done in red, black and white. So um, that was a big paying job, but Ken got Ken got fifteen percent. Five know, zero one five. Pretty, huh? Five zero 15, or one five. One five. Okay, all right. The norm is ten, and <laughs> so um, and then I did a like sixty page showroom catalog. Okay. The most hideous job, um, and then. Uh, uh, was seeing, well, I'm not going to go into that. Um, uh, my portfolio ended up getting stolen from the VIP room of the limelight. Uh, and, nice. and Ken had pressed me to get C prints made, of which I did not do. All right, right copies, and, right? Yeah. So I had lost uh, everything uh -huh. and pretty devastating. And around this time, I'm not convinced that my mother didn't somehow orchestrate this but she had a breakdown uh mentally and um i left new york to take care of her for eight years did you come back to dryden or i came home? back to ithaca and yep. worked at the statler okay hotel and um oh, okay, yeah i remember that place yeah um that's where i was reacquainted with uh Kierdwin. I don't know the name. What's the name again? Her, well, her name is Kierdwin Sturmer. Hmm. Um, hmm. Not ringing a bell. No. No. Nope. Um, and uh, we just, she worked in graphics. Okay. And uh, she also went to Dryden, but she was several several years below okay. uh, under us. All right. And, but just was and is still a, a fantastic woman. Okay. Um, funny just just absolutely love her yeah. and um and uh you said she, she was in graphics too right she was in graphics yeah she went to rochester okay um and um uh yeah so i was there for eight years okay uh eight long years yeah yeah yep and then and it's ironic. I, I would love to know if somebody in numerology, because my, my life ended up in like eight year cycles mm -hmm. after that. Like I was I would transition and move. Yeah, yeah. Three, eight years. Yeah, yeah. Whether, I don't know whether that means something. I don't know. Um, and so uh, to um, preserve my mental state. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I moved all the way across the country to San Francisco. And okay. this would be around 95 96 okay i think yep. so about, Diana, about 35 now 35 36 years old now right or the, how old are you then yeah i don't know it 95. was 90 it, it was 96 so yeah yeah as it because yeah. princess diana died in 97 right right yeah okay so i was in san francisco yes. still when she died mm -hmm. so um and then i i uh, used my skills learned from the Statler and started working for the Kempton Boutique properties. Okay. Which were four and five star uh, properties mm -hmm. and um, became, um, because of a professor I met at the Statler from Germany, she taught um, general managers housekeeping. And okay. she had a philosophy that housekeeping was not the second class citizen to the front desk. Mm -hmm. within the rooms division and i thought that was absolutely brilliant um because without the housekeeping staff you wouldn't have a hotel right right and right. so 
Um, and they were usually a wide assortment of people and culture. Yes. And I just thought that was uh, one. I loved that philosophy. Yep. I loved the idea of elevating someone uh, because back then uh, housekeeping was a second class citizen to the front desk yep. and yep. were treated that way. And uh, when I saw a wrong, mm -hmm. I was right there. I'm going to, I'm going to make it right. And yes. so I passionately fell into the housekeeping department uh, with my OCD yeah, yeah. and, um, and uh, uh, one of my greatest achievements, I, I believe, was being able to integrate the various cultures. And in San Francisco, you're talking Filipino, Mexican. Well, it's worldwide, uh, right? Nation, huh? Worldwide. Yeah. And, and integrating, because they would segregate themselves by their own groups. Right. And, um, yep. and uh, trying to form a team, yep. a functioning team, um uh one would need to integrate them and so um i did so successfully and and it was a um i was i was proud of myself for that very nice because nobody had ever been able to do that yes you know? so all right that's a, that's a tough skill set my friend and sounds like yeah. you got it. yeah it yeah it was really really rewarding because they had because uh, there's a lot of sister properties uh, mm -hmm. of the uh, Kempton hotels, in, particularly in San Francisco. So during housekeeping week, they would have competitions between the various hotels. And one of the things you had to do was you had to um, have a like a, a dance type contest to a theme and everybody had to perform it. Well, um, my artist choice was always back then Madonna. <laughs> so okay. yep. everybody had to do Madonna. And, um, and uh, we actually won those, but, but and, and that was one of the ways of getting them to work together was, yeah. you know, as, as a group. And, and uh, we uh, many years won, won that. So, um, but that first time in San Francisco, I was only there for a year. Okay. And then I moved to Chicago to open their property, the Monaco, uh, from the ground up, and um, and uh, met some met a great friend now yeah. uh, that I've known now for over twenty years, mm -hmm. uh, and he's he's the one that I'm going to Costa Rica with uh, in February. Nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And um, so worked there for eight years in Chicago mm -hmm. and uh, became, I had met this girl while I was at the Statler, um, Kim Gaylord, and used that as an or we kind of manipulated that opportunity from San Francisco to the Chicago opening mm -hmm. to reestablish our friendship. And so I lived in their Lakeshore uh, Drive apartment condo for uh, four years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, their mother, who was the uh, a true Renaissance woman and matriarch of the family, died in 1999. Yeah. And um, so I took the opportunity to leave the hotel industry mm -hmm. and became a personal assistant to the family who had properties in Naples, uh, Las Vegas, the Chicago property, and then the main house in Rockford, Illinois. Did you become a property manager at that point or what did I you did? It was, yeah, I, I managed all their properties, mm -hmm. uh, various uh, gardeners and house, housekeeping staff. I took over Mr. Gaylord's uh, accounts mm -hmm. um, and um, um, yeah, it was, that was, that was, that was nice. Okay. And uh, was there for again, eight years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, cycle. Yep. I'm sorry. The eight year cycle. Yes. And then uh, I went back to, well, this is actually interesting. I didn't drive up to this point. I don't, had always used either taxis or public or, you know, the subway system. Oh, wait, whatever. You didn't drive at all from high school on to then? No. Really? No. So when I decided to go back to San Francisco, um, I had, I wasn't going to fly there, and I because you know, I didn't know how to get all my shit 
there. So I decided to drive. And um, so I took, I bought my first car and um, got my driver's license. Mm -hmm. Scary. From Very Chicago, scary. right? Uh, yeah, well, this was in Rockford at, the, at this point. I, I was living full time now in the main house in Rockford, okay. uh, Illinois. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, and so I I got this station wagon that would haul all my crap. All your crap, yep. Yeah. And I got as far as uh, Greenberg or Greensboro, Kansas. They had just had a tornado that year, and well, and at the time that I was going through it, actually. Yeah, yeah. It was still storming and, and awful, and wow. and um, you were driving through the tornado. Well, through the was, storm. It was right? the day after. Yeah, it was the okay. day after, but it was still still storming. I know. And um, my car promptly caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> no, why? Yeah. Do I know why? Yeah. Uh, there was some kind of spring that went because I I I felt and heard the spring underneath the car like snap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what that is, um, yeah. but it, it's something that connects the front to the back. Yeah, uh, yeah. I heard it, and um, and my friend in Chicago uh, was playing a game with me, and had, we had hid money, or he had hid, hid money throughout my car. Mm -hmm. And so I'm on the phone with him, going, "Where the hell's the money? My car's on fire, and you know, <laughs> tell me where it is." <laughs> This is like about five hundred dollars that's hidden somewhere in my car. That was like a game through, you know, from Chicago to San Francisco. And so I had a kind of a spiritual experience in Kansas at that time. And two tr truckers on the highway, one going west and one going east on seventy, uh -huh. stopped stopped their vehicles. And while I'm on the phone trying to find out where the money is. They're unloading my car. The two of them uh, unloading your car. Yeah, I and to this day I don't know their names. I can't tell you what they look like because as soon as they got their, my car unloaded, which and they set everything out on the side. Yeah, because it was on fire. Road. Huh? Because it was, it was on, fire. on fire in the road, right? It was on fire. Yeah, it was on yep. fire. And so two complete strangers stopped. Your car's on fire. You're making a phone call. They're unloading your station wagon. You got all your stuff on it. Just being nice people. Just being great people. Yeah. Just, I mean, when when would you uh, when would you see that? Um, anyway, I was stunned, and <laughs> then to add to add to the. Uh, Sorry, I just sent you the second half meeting notice. Okay, I'm just answering. I thought I turned it off. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt. To, to um. Uh, so they're unloading your car. Yeah. So they unloaded my car and left. Okay. The next thing that happened was this farmer who lived across a field mm -hmm. drove his vehicle across his field and loaded all my belongings into his car and stored it for two days until my aunt Knuckle could could uh, collect it. Now, wow. When does something like that happen? Pretty rare. I don't know. I was I was I was pretty impressed with Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at that time and the people that inhabited it, and um, and stayed with the aunt, aunt and uncle uh, for a few days. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it it was really kind of a moving experience for me spiritually. And mm -hmm. um, of course, Kansas is is a very um, uh, big and flat how, how do you say that uh big and flat yeah they're they're very uh <laughs> they're conservative state but they're lovely lovely people lovely yeah. people well dave uh, I, i'll just tell you so yeah. my mother and father both were raised in kansas yeah so i spent a fair amount of time in kansas every summer uh-huh going out to, to step back and we always called it stepping back in time because it seemed like it was 1950. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. If, if you drew an X across Kansas, corner to corner, it mm -hmm. would fall on a, a small town called Lorraine, Kansas. And that's where my mother was. Okay. And so we would go back there. One street kind of town, no stoplights. Yeah. You could 
see the grain elevator that way and yeah. the next grain elevator that way, right? That's correct. Okay. That, right. that is Kansas. Kansas. That's Stepping Kansas back in Kansas. time. So, yep. Yes. Very yes. nice people. Lovely, lovely, lovely people. Yep. Okay. And um, so I uh, eventually got to uh, San Francisco, was there until uh, 2011. Okay. Um, working for uh, uh, two Kimpton properties there and um, uh, met a gentleman who um, uh, was one of the greatest people I've ever met and uh, one of the purest souls I've ever met and um, um, but with a drug problem and because I I've discovered uh, and I discovered it rather early uh, I think when I was at FIT that damaged people yeah. have the most interesting stories oh yeah oh yeah you that's know? true without a doubt yeah. yeah and and I just gravitated towards those people because I found them incredibly interesting yeah and I could relate to parts of their story yeah. And so Patrick was one of these people and, and, um, um, uh, eventually I started using, yeah. I was actually using a little bit more in New York and Chicago than, than I've mentioned, but, uh, but it wasn't a full-time right. commitment, um, more of a partying Friday night type of thing. Mm -hmm. And but I had met Patrick and we connected. And so, we started using, uh, and um, uh, realized at at one point that we you know this was could not be our lifestyle, and right. and we went we went to meetings and whatnot, and and um, we're doing quite well. And he fell off the wagon, and um, eventually uh, died from an oxycotton overdose. I see. Oh, uh, yeah. Three doors from our apartment. Yeah. And um, so um, my brother died in 2004 and uh, Patrick died in 2008 okay. and hadn't really reconciled my brother's death. Uh, yeah. And in, in fact, uh, wasn't speaking to my mother for 14 years after Bobby died. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because we all felt a sense of, or at least I did, I, I should only speak for myself, uh, guilt over, over Bobby's death. And, um, and then Patrick died. Mm -hmm. And that just um, hit me very hard. Yep. Uh, Patrick had proposed and I had, I had, because of the way I was brought up in a very conservative Baptist home, yeah. uh, was not sure that that was the way route to take mm -hmm. and uh, had said no uh, uh, for the five minutes it was legal in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so I started using heavily at that point and that's when I met um, Jason who would meet then in 2018 become my husband. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I stop you right there, Dave? So we yes. have like a, a minute left on this session. Oh my God, really? Yeah. yeah. And so let's move over to the second session and we will restart on okay. that, on that so little you, break. You're going to send me... I sent you a second link inside of Facebook. Okay. So, so do I do that now? Yeah, so I'm going to end this and we'll okay. re-click and reconvene. Got it. Yeah. All right. If you've ever seen the movie, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Okay. Have you ever seen it? Uh, I don't Edward think that I have. I can't say okay. that I have. No. It's it's a. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. Anyway, it was uh, an ugly relationship. Yep. It was a codependent relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and um, but we loved each other, and yeah. for whatever reason, for twelve mm -hmm. years we couldn't. Uh, we couldn't not be together, okay. which, you know, it is what it is. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I 
came back, I, I came to Kansas in 2011. Mm -hmm. So from 2008 to 2011 was uh, probably um, the best and worst time of my life. Gotcha. And, um, and uh, so um, I had, uh, had broken up with Jason uh, uh, in 2011. Uh, and I just, I knew it wasn't healthy and, and, and I had to, had to leave. Mm -hmm. So I stupidly had one last night of partying and, um, woke up, uh, someplace on a filthy, filthy mattress, okay. not knowing who was next to me, how I got there and realized that I had to walk home in the daylight without my sunglasses ah. um, and got home, sat at the kitchen table and said to myself that this, this is not, this can't be my life. This, I, this, I can't, this can't be my life. Yeah, yeah. And at that moment, a voice that I'm going to say was God uh, told me to go to, to Quinter. Mm-hmm. And I could, I, I mean, I would have preferred going back to Chicago, <laughs> but the voice said, go to Quinter. And so I hadn't seen my aunt and uncle mm -hmm. since the, um, the 19, uh, the, you know, trip to, from Chicago to um, right. San Francisco in the burning car. Yeah. So and, this was Quinter, Kansas, right? This is Quinter, Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so... I trusted this voice and I called my aunt and uncle mm -hmm. and uh, told them what was going on. I was very frank and very honest. Yeah. And they did not hesitate uh, and told me to come to, to Quinter. There you go. Yes. And so um, got into a Bible study, mm -hmm. um, which probably grounded me because at least three attempts were made to get Coke in Quinter, Kansas. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get Coke in Quinter, Kansas. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that. Um, it's, just, it's just not there. Not it's just yet. not here. Try as I might. Um, but I, I, I tried three times and I thought three, three strikes and you're out. And, you know, God is telling you something. So, um, but this Bible study was, was they allowed me to be honest with, um, with safety Yep. And yep. security. And um, um, consequently, uh, Jason re entered the picture. And uh, during this 12 year period, uh, I made three attempts, <laughs> ironically, to um, believe him that he was going sober and moved back to San Francisco um, on three other three separate occasions. Uh, he moved he here to uh, Quinter, uh, twice. Okay. Uh, uh, in 2018, like I said, we married, uh, and, uh, he hooked up with the worst person for him to hook up with in this town and, uh, came home, uh, one evening and, uh, consequently there was a domestic that resulted from that. Mm -hmm. And he was extradited back to San Francisco. Hmm. Um, and so I thought that was, that was the end of it. I was, I had started divorce proceedings and as, as addicts can, they know every button to push, particularly in a codependent relationship. Yep. And you're more than willing to believe, you know, every second of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we tried it again, and uh, uh, we found out at that time that he had um, the beginnings of congestive heart failure based on his alcohol and substance abuse. Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, it could have been corrected if he'd stayed clean, mm -hmm. or not corrected, but it, it could have been controlled. Yeah. Um, or at uh, least slowed down, right? Yeah. I mean, he he mm -hmm. could have lived, you know. Yeah. And so I came back with 
plans to um, pack up belongings and head to San Francisco, back to San Francisco to um, hopefully get him through this. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just, you can't help an addict that doesn't want to change. Yep. And that's the tragedy of loving an addict. Yeah. And so, um, um, this was just at the start of COVID. So it'd be around 2020. Yep. And they weren't allowing flights. They weren't even allowing you into hospitals right. if you had a loved one there. And so um, that was a very difficult time. And Jason didn't understand was, what was going on in the outside world. And he, he at one point, uh, became uh, septic and was uh, un unable to communicate. Yep. And so he didn't understand why I wasn't there. And that, that's always haunted me. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, had met this wonderful doctor, uh, Dr. Price, in San Francisco, who ironically is from Kansas City. <laughs> what are the chances? Right. And, and uh, he was uh, uh, just a giving, giving soul. Um, he didn't have to do half of the things that he did uh, on my behalf, or both of our behalves. And um, and then he got, he he passed. Mm. Yeah, that was. That was not good. Yeah, yeah. This is getting like a therapy session. Okay, let's change the subject to something different. Well, there you well, go. well, let me just say, Dave, you know, I've known you for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously, you know, the loss of someone you absolutely positively, truly love is yeah. absolutely heart wrenching. And I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, really I, I understand I you get you through all this stuff, but it's, it sucks, and I know. Yeah. Um, well, I know you know. I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry about your son. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, it's, I, it sucks. Yeah. We know. We know. You don't ever really get over it, but you know. No, you just learn to adapt. The, the pain yeah. never goes away. You just learn to adapt. Correct. That's adapt. all you do. Yep. That's all you Good do. Word. Yep. Good word. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're all caught up. What are you doing right now? For work? I think so. Well, okay. So when. Um, when I had come to uh, Kansas in 2011 and had what was kind of an epiphany and, and a, a God direction, mm -hmm. um, I, through most of my life, had been pretty selfish and, and um, it was mostly about me. And, um, and I thought that if I had gotten out of California alive, yeah. um, I wanted to be of service. Um, to people hmm. and in a way of, of giving back and, and um, kind of uh, in a way, you know, asking to rectify some of my <laughs> previous yeah. behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, um, and uh, so I am cleaning homes. Uh, it had started out being for, you know, seniors uh, who were not re yet ready for uh, the long-term care type right. of situation, but um, right. and then it's kind of you know it it you know spawned you know various forms of business where I had you know several employees and that just got to be too much, so mm -hmm. I I gave those employees those clients that they were doing uh, for me, and I assumed a. a uh, I kept my important high paying clients. <laughs> it is a business and one has to live and okay. um, uh, adore all my clients. And, um, and uh, I back, I'm back to having at least one employee uh, work for me okay. uh, and with me. And it just, it just continues to mushroom um, mm -hmm. more than I would like it to. Um, but there's a huge need for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think particularly out here, um, yeah. Yep. It's kind of no man's land and right. um, families are working and, you know, can't always attend to right. uh, older, older family, family members. Yep. And so. Plus, plus Dave, it's very honorable. Well, I'm not going to, you know, break my arm, patting my own back, but I, I feel really, really good. 
yep. about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And on days uh, when I'm I'm challenged to embrace that thought, <laughs> right? I just I just remember why I'm here and why I'm doing it, and and um, so yeah, yeah. Yep. very yeah. good. Next, so, okay. <laughs> So, Dave, do you have anything else? Dave Jackson, do you have anything well, else? No, I mean, Dave J. I mean, Dave, you, Dave, you know, you know, you know how it is. This is the whole thing is such a journey. I mean, we're in our sixties now, and we've all been through things in life that yeah. yep. we had to push through. Yeah, and then we got through, and you're sitting here talking to high school classmates. You know, forty years after you graduated yeah, school. Yep. Yeah, and, you know, to me, you know, doing this with Dave and talking to you, talking to our fellow classmates has been such an honor and such a blessing. Oh. And just to find out, you know, you're in front of us right now. We finally got to, you know, hook up here on the phone yeah. and talk. Yep. And, and yeah, it's just such an, it's just an, for me, it's just an amazing thing that, yep. you know, we got to do this and we got, we get to hear your story. It's just, it's just, for me, it's just so cool. And I'm, I'm happy you're sitting here in front of us, healthy, oh. alive, you're doing great Thank stuff. You. And Thank it's you. just awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I tell you, it was a, Great thrill to have Mr. Baki uh, ride through town, and a, 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 a yeah. funny story, which which I'm sure he's gonna, you know, be amused that I'm telling this story. We would um, love to hear it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. he he was driving uh, from the west, uh, going east, and he had passed this uh, police car. Now, mind you, uh, in the my first two years of driving in Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had gotten six speeding tickets. No, you did not. <laughs> I did. And you're a bit of a lead foot. It's all flat here. I mean, I mean, it's flat I get and it. straight. I get it. Flat, flat and straight. straight. I mean, how do they? How do they expect you to keep it under seventy five? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> Before I know it, I'm going ninety, and I'm loving it. You know. Right. Yeah. And the slowing got down to do twenty in town. Yeah, yeah. Drives me nuts. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Anyway, so Phil Phil had had uh, rode past this this police officer, and uh, after we had dinner, we were heading out because I had a commitment to babysit a Yorkie and an Australian Blue Heeler, my favorite <laughs> client's dog. So he naturally, because he was a day early, um, joined me, mm -hmm. and so I was uh, I was leading, you know, doing my usual ninety, and. Phil was keeping up. And uh, who do we pass? In pursuit oh, no. of the same police officer. He he recognized her. And I thought for sure we were both nailed. I I I I I would have promised you that that she was gonna get us. Okay. You know, after seeing her, I slowed down back to the speed limit. Um, and we Phil, Phil and I got to the uh, house and he goes, Did you see that cop? I go, did I see that cop? Like you almost hit me for me slowing down so so quickly. <laughs> and I said, well, what I'm amused by Mr. Police Officer is that you were keeping up with me at 90. <laughs> <laughs> see, I thought you were gonna go down the path of, she stopped us both and Phil talked us out of it. That's where I thought no, it was that would have been a cute story, right? That, that would have been great. That would have been um, a huge story. Yeah. Like you no. knew her from the Academy or something. Right, right. right. He was right. like, oh, yeah, he, she was at a cat, you know, yeah, we'll just going to academy. Go. That yeah. would have been a better story, indeed. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no. Uh -huh. I, I just I just thought it was it was meritable on Phil's part to be going 90. I, I thought, you know, please, once a police officer, oh. always a police officer, sir, you stay in that kind of man no, mindset. No, 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 no. No. I have a lot of Phil stories, but I won't tell him. But uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> speed going slow was not one of his problems. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Yeah, um, but the, the other great moment of his visit was uh, the surprise phone call from Agnes back. Yep. Aww. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it was like I had just seen her yesterday. It Did was, you see our interview with Agnes? I'm sorry? Did you see our interview with Agnes? We no. I, I, I've only seen two. Um, um, I I will review other interviews after. Mm -hmm. the Agnes like, one's great. Yeah, we just oh, did okay. Agnes like three weeks ago. So yeah, you did. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Was it hilarious? 
It was very good. had a good time. We yeah. had to up, right? She <laughs> is a rip. I absolutely, absolutely love her. You yeah. Know, such a lovely, lovely surprise. Yeah. We had a good time with Agnes. Yeah. She's she is she's a now, she's, so, a, red, she's a redhead. So if she you is. want. <laughs> so I got a couple of picks. Okay. All right. Picture, picture time. All right, oh so God! Do it no! I I guarantee you this is something I'll edit out. But go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you might right. not. Calm so, down, Dave. It's not that bad, man. Get your spectacles on. There you go. Yeah, I got it. Yep. All right, hang on a second here. So we're gonna go uh, advanced portion of screen and screen two. Ah, like, see, I knew you were gonna show that. I hate it. So do he, you know why I did that hair? Why? why? It's, it's all Bette Midler's fault. It's Bette Midler's fault. I said yes. the same thing, Dave. You're That's right. what I said to Dave. Bette oh, Midler's fault. God. Now, uh, Phil, Phil Bakke, again, and Sherry yep. Kate were kind enough to uh, make uh, allow me to be a third wheel uh -huh. on, their, on their date, no less, uh, to go see the Rose. Uh, Aww. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So along with this haircut and the Rose... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were you going to be doing? What was your senior prophecy? You remember your senior prophecy, Dave? I have no idea. There it is. Stones. Stones. That was your yeah, next was, living it up in up Big Apple. Well, that I did. That's so all you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Prophecy yeah. fulfilled. Now stones. Stone. Who called me stones? I don't yeah, know. What, yeah. What's the backstory there? Yeah. I have no idea. No idea. No. But I will tell you this. This is what I remember about high school. Yeah, yeah. Because high school for a gay teen in the 70s yeah. was not a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, so it wasn't really an overall great experience. But this is what I remember about about high school. Uh, in, this, in, in, in seventh grade, I remember Kay Liddington and Susan Hurst yep. uh, being like, like big sisters to this this weasel of a seven year old who just kind of like, you know, <laughs> haunt, haunted them. Um, but I, I I adored both of them, both yep. brilliant brilliantly funny women. Uh, the other thing I remember is the day that Chris Jordan entered our class, and I was I was outside of her being strikingly beautiful. I thought, um, and it is. Um, I thought she had the courage that I wished I had, and she was incredibly talented mm -hmm. and um, just loved Chris Jordan, just absolutely loved her. Yeah. Um, and um, well, what would be something else I remember from high school? Well, I, I remember. Well, let's, let's, let's show some more pictures here. I've we'll got back, we'll talk God. Oh, my God. Question. And Dave there we go. Yeah. What was going on there? Did we Pep ever rally. establish what was going on there? Pep rally. Pep rally the gym. It they was had what? Be, had Pep to be rally in the gym. Pep rally, basketball game. Very mm -hmm. pep rally. Well, I I can't imagine I'd be that interested in a, in a basketball game. No, you were um, interested in the pep rally. It wasn't the basketball game? It was a pep rally during daytime during the school that oh. day. During yeah, it was a pep rally before yeah, the big game. And it was something that that it was that interesting. <laughs> you, you were, that, yeah, I mean, you both of our mouths are open. Like yeah. we're seeing something astonishing. That's right. And I think that and I think that Steve Lisi just belonged you, just beyond it you. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. You guys were in awe. Yeah, we this, were. This, now, correct me if I'm wrong. This looks like you're holding a megaphone. <laughs> yes. Is that me holding that? Yes. Well, who else's hand is that? I have no. <laughs> I have zero memory of this, and I can't imagine myself holding a fucking megaphone <laughs> or uh, a pep rally that I would not have been interested in cheering for. That's um, hysterical. <laughs> is that really a megaphone? That's a megaphone. That looks like a megaphone to me. It looks like somebody's hairy arm to me. <laughs> well, I was looking at that, and I was like, is that somebody's calf or a fork? Yeah. No, it's a megaphone. I can't believe I would have a megaphone. <laughs> one, one, I wouldn't have enough courage to like yell, yell into it. anything into it. No, no. All right, no. all right. Okay, that, that's really all the pictures that uh, 
I got a couple others, but they're more like class pictures and things like that. Okay. So unless you're yeah. interested in pulling those up. I am I I'm really not. <laughs> All right. That's fine. That's fine. Now, Dave, I want to relay a story. You asked me how I knew you had a portfolio. Yeah. Do you remember one of the very first trips you took to New York City? I do. I do. And, and I believe the class. That? I believe the class took up a collection. Is that correct? No. Okay. Well, I remember one time uh, Phil drove me to the bus station. No. Go ahead. That was me, sir. I'm 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 lucky because. In a month and a half, I've had to climb through my window Yay. five times because <laughs> I've left my keys uh, in the house. So, so here's what I remember, mm -hmm. and you you can tell me if this is right or wrong. Okay. So you were looking to, I, I believe it was senior year. Mm -hmm. You were looking to go to New York City, and you right. had talked to me about it. Oh. You were taking your portfolio, your fashion portfolio. Okay. And you asked me to drive you over to the Cortland Greyhound Station. It was you and not Phil? That is correct. Oh, my God. And uh, so I was working at the mall at that time. And I think, okay. I think, here's what I remember. You had like 10 bucks mm -hmm. going to the Greyhound Station. Mm -hmm. Like just enough for the ticket. Right. I gave you 50 bucks. Did you really? Yes, from my from my Tom McCann selling shoes at the mall to go. I hope to... I didn't deprive you of anything. I hear no, no, no. I hope you weren't taking Pam out on a date and I I deprived you of that. That would have been prior to that uh the Pamela oh, okay. any Pamela event. Okay. And uh so that I night I can't believe that. I, took, I put you on the Greyhound station. I put you mm -hmm. at the Cortland mm -hmm. Greyhound station. Put you on the bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went home. Didn't say nothing to nobody, right? Yeah. So in the evening, my dad oh. comes back, bangs yeah. on the door, right? Bangs on my bedroom door. Yeah. And he's like, I just got a call from oh my God. Mr. Stoner. Because you used to live over in Homer, right? Harford. 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 It was Harford. And the big brick house there. Correct. Going into town. And so your dad called my dad. and he How would he know to call you? Somehow he had found out. My dad comes in and he goes, did you give somebody a ride to the bus stop today? <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Yeah, I gave David, you know, he was he was wanting to get out of, out of Harford and uh, I gave him a ride to the bus stop. Right? Yeah. So uh, I seem to remember you being in New York City for a little while. And yeah. I don't know if it was like a week or a couple weeks. I don't know what it was. Yeah. And when you got back, you told me you had run into, see if this, and not that I know anybody, you had showed your portfolio to a guy named Ziggy. Okay. In New York City. And he was taking you under his wing. And now, I, now yeah. I can't verify anything that happened in New York City because I have no idea. Yeah. But you had told me that you'd met a guy named Ziggy in the fashion design district. He was interested in your portfolio. Yeah. There was, yeah, I did, I did interview with one person. Mm -hmm. And what, because my portfolio outside of fashion design yeah. had some um, um, progressive art. Yes. Let's say. And uh, uh, I, I don't know that he was in the fashion industry. I have no idea. Right? I don't recall. Um, but um, um, for anybody that's ever read a or seen a pornographic magazine, there was uh, illustrations mm -hmm. uh, in those magazines. And that's what he, uh, he wanted me to do based on my work. Yeah. That was that story. But... Um, I showed him a couple sketches. Yeah. And uh, I was actually staying at a hotel um, via somebody I met. And the hotel manager came to the room, and I never figured out ever how he would know where I was. 
uh, or how my parents would know. So that's, it's, it's interesting, but I still, I still can't figure out how they knew where I was. Yeah. Well, I mean, other than putting you on the Greyhound bus to New York, Mm -hmm. I don't have any other knowledge of beyond the bus stop. Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, yeah, (laughs) I, I don't recall ever asking my family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were not the Brady Bunch, let me tell you. Uh, we were two merged, two merged families in a short period of time, um, and um, you you would not confuse us with the Brady Bunch by any means. Um, so I'm not sure whether I ever ever got an answer, whether I asked, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, um, yeah, barely a memory of that. Well, obviously my, my memory was incorrect because I thought it was it was Phil Bakke that took me to the bus station. Yeah, yeah. Well, there. Kind of both kind of blondes. Kind well, of. we are both blondes. <laughs> until, you know. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, both, both obviously very kind, kind yeah. people. We traveled um, in the same circles, right? So it could have been anybody. Could have been Mark. Look, are you looking to get the fifty dollars back? <laughs> I was looking away <laughs> from him to say that. That's right. And waiting. by the right. way, I'm you owe me fifty. I'm waiting for David to say, "Well, if you could compound the interest, right? right. If you're talking right. nineteen seventy nine eighty dollars, right?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so I don't have nearly a cool a story as Dave just did. Cause that's just one of my favorite stories. Here's my memories of Dave Stoner in high school. Yeah. I could not wait. Whether we were sitting by each other in study hall. For some reason I, I sat by you. I remember sitting by you a lot and I could mm-hmm. not wait to make you laugh because I thought your laugh was so awesome back then. <laughs> I could not wait to make you chuckle and yeah. I always said, man, this guy thinks I'm funny. And I'm making him laugh. This is <laughs> guy great. Oh. Like, and, what, and obviously the thing I really remember is, is anything you wanted to know about Judy Garland or Marilyn Monroe right. or anything in that genre, yeah, yeah, you were right there. And I could not wait to see her. I was so blown away. I mean, I, probably as early as seventh grade. I could not wait to see, because you were always drawing. You and Joel Bender were two people who were always drawing. I could not wait to see your stuff. And I was blown away at that age we were, where I could barely draw a stick figure. You were doing this stuff. And I was just, I was like, this this is some of the coolest thing ever. Huh. Well, that's nice of you to say. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. Uh, High school was just not uh, a great thing for me because half of you, half of you kids lived in Freeville Yep. or the or the Dryden area yeah. and mm-hmm. and it had I apparently bonded for like years and years and years before um and you know and I was like way out in the other the other direction and in Hartford and yeah 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 so you know it just made it kind of I don't know challenging in many ways yep. yeah or, yep. I mean Bill Bill Bosley he lived down in Hartford too and it was the same way he had the same challenges that yeah, I mean, I had to go out, you know, during our senior year and whatnot, I'd have to go out and pick up Bill Bosley to bring him a dry to do things. And, you know, yeah. I just. Yes. Yeah. And we've already established that I didn't drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. So. So. I was eager to leave the area. Yep. No. Clearly. Um, I guess even, even before I should have. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Rightfully. No, you were, you were ready to punch out pretty early. Yeah, I was, yes. Yep. yes. Now, Dave, do you have anything that you want to ask Dave, Dave and myself? Um, yeah, by the way. As we sort of wind no, no. down here, right? Yeah, I um I don't know. I'm 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 fascinated by how you guys came up with this idea to do this. I think it's it think it's wonderful. Uh and it kind of reconnects us all. We're where, where we kind of all started back on Facebook to reconnect. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like, you know, the next step. Yeah. Um, uh, whose idea was this? It was a combo. It, it, it was, was almost in parallel. You know, Dave, yeah. and, Dave and I sort of joked around over the last couple of years or whatnot. Yeah. And uh, I think Blanche and or Pamela, either either simultaneously or at different times, said, you know, you guys ought to do a little show, like a podcast or something. Yeah, because we yuck it up a lot when we're together. Because we screw around all the time, right? <laughs> okay. And uh, so you guys have known each other since high school, like like you've stayed in touch physically, and yeah, 
Yeah. Often I'm, you know, it's yeah. been, uh, you know, when Dave was in the Air Force and he was playing bass, he came through North Carolina. Okay. And then uh, during, I want to say, um, you know, early 2000s. And then I've been up to Pittsburgh a couple times. Dave's been down to Raleigh a couple times. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we, we sort of stay in touch. And it, it's one of those things that kind of erases time a lot of times. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was like your conversation with Agnes, right? Instantly you're, yeah. you, you gel and you yeah. hang out and you talk about stuff that, you know, like it was time was compressed. It was, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It, and it actually it blew my mind how easily it was with Agnes. Right to slip back you in, know? right? Yeah, yeah. It 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 it, it just uh, I don't know. I I was impressed with both of us that we that we could do that. But but she's she was a riot, and it yeah. and and uh, um, bless her heart. I, I just I just she was so lovely and and. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, we, we just kicked it around for a little bit. We were like, you know, my, the very first episode was, um, we did the spring right after my dad passed. Oh. And it, it, it sort of turned into, you know, we were silly and we did a little bit of a memorial thing and then, uh -huh. you know, traced my steps. Right. Yeah. And Dave was number episode number two, where we traced his steps. Okay, and, and so it just took off from there, and like, okay, well, what do you want to do now? You know, yeah. and I was like, well, let's see who we can get on the phone, right? Yeah, I think it was. I think it's a brilliant idea, and you know, um, like like I said earlier, I I thought Denise's interview, uh, which is you know one of two that I've seen, uh, was brilliant. Um, yeah, I it was, was beautiful. Totally entranced with her speech and her thought process. Yeah. I thought she was spectacular um uh, i'm dying to see agnes's now i can't wait <laughs> exactly um, it, right so uh mr jackson you were in the air force for how long uh 20 years in one day so we were 30 i actually enlisted in the air force right in the middle of the iranian hostage crisis in 1979 both my both my wife and i both did oh of course she wasn't my wife then she was my girlfriend then but did you, so did and you then she was Huh? Did you go overseas? Yeah, we were, yeah, we went overseas. We both did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, so we she went in six months before I did because she she graduated the year before we did. Uh -huh. um, so she went in. She went in that January of eighty, and then I went in thirty days after we graduated high school. And so you then, both saw action? Is that when well, I, I, I no? She did not. She got out of the service after we had our first child, and then I went. I was part of the Desert Storm, Desert Shield era. You were. That was my, yeah, that was my time frame. So, yeah, then I retired, retired in uh, 2000, uh, exactly 20 years in one day. Yep. yep. Any um, any issues with your experience during, this, um, during the war conflict? I mean, like PTSD. Or, I guess. Huh? PTSD. At that uh, I mean, there's some stuff. There's some stuff that's, that's lagging. Uh, but yeah. nothing that's going to – nothing's, like, made me, you know, change my lifestyle or – had me yeah. regret or anything like that but there, there's always some stuff there because you see stuff and you experience things yeah. but uh other than that it was a, it was a great we had my wife well, I had a great career well you can I talk mean, about your role a little bit just so dave understands yeah so i went in uh well my my first job when i went in was uh uh hotel in the air force hotel and motel management dave no shit right yeah. okay yeah so it was it was lodging and dormitory and there was also side jobs of search and recovery, which is exactly that. If a plane crashes, you search for bodies, that type of thing. But the main the main crux of the career field was lodging and dormitory management. Okay. Uh, after four years, I wanted to work on aircraft, so I went to jet engines. Uh huh. At my four year mark, so in '84, I went to jet engines, and then I did that uh, till I got into a higher rank. Because once you get in higher ranks in the military, you're not a wrench turner anymore. You're, ma you're management. Okay. Um, and then I got, and, you know, through Dave Seymour, I learned how to play bass guitar. And I got to play with Air Force Tops and Blue and travel the oh, world wow. and to entertain the troops in 1993. So was that uh, part of the USO or? No, actually, the, the, so they don't exist anymore. But in 1943, the Air Force started this thing called Air Force Tops and Blue, which is 
airmen and officers who have other abilities, vocalists, instrumentalists, magicians, stuff like that. And they actually compete and they form a, they form a show. And they travel to all the Air Force bases to entertain the troops. It's not the USO. And, um, but it's all regular airmen who have other, you know, other talents. Yeah. Talent. yeah. And so over the years, uh, you go through the talent show system and I finally made it. I, I tried for 11 years and finally made it to 1993, the team. And we did a, a, a worldwide tour to all the Air Force bases and Eastern Europe. And t- I played bass guitar for the troops. No yeah. kidding. Yep. Yeah. So I did that. And then I. Well, that's I a life experience, experience that you wouldn't trade. Oh, no. Well, A, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Uh-huh. Another, um, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. because it, it, it changed me as a person, uh, as, a, as a musician. It changed me in all kinds of ways. And I stayed with. Uh, the Air Force would have me back every year to help them with the talent shows for the new teams that went out, wow. help pick the cast and stuff like that and do the auditions. Okay. And then 1997, I went back as tour director for a while. And then they, they stopped the program uh, in 2015. Uh, the president said he didn't want to have Air Force folks do that anymore, and they, they shut it down. So, really? yeah. I don't want to interrupt you there. We're down to the last minute. We could start a new one. Or we could wrap this. I one think up. we're good, guys. All I right, think we're good. That's cool. um, I'm assuming you, you and Pam are very happy. Yeah, we're doing fine. The, we're starting to marry off the kids. Yay! And uh, you know, <laughs> Wilson just got married last weekend to a lovely young lady. My daughter, who has come out as gay, is marrying next June. Okay. And so, uh, everything's moving forward. I got two kids. So. Okay, and grandchildren yet? Pardon? Grandchildren at all? I got a, a seven-year-old granddaughter that came through the marriage pre- a prior arrangement. I see. Okay. Uh-huh. So my okay. son and his wife have a seven-year-old. So I'm playing the role of grandfather already. Oh, yeah. and I bet you're great at it. Yeah, I, well, I try. Dave does. Uh, he's got much more experience being a granddad than I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think I've seen that, Dave, that you have yeah. grandchildren. Like you, you have multiples. Yeah. 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 All right, so we are down to the final seconds, Dave. All right, thank and you very much. Thank for you, Dave. talking with us. You guys, it's been great. It's All been right. great. It was great catching thank up. You, Thanks All for right. sharing, Dave. All right, love you guys. Bye, All right. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.